An old hunched over crone hobbles into town. Windows and doors slam shut in her wake, and a terrible cloud of despair falls over a once lively community. A fever comes on unexpectedly, along with aches, pains, and fatigue. Quickly but surely, women, men, children, lords, peasants, and priests alike are struck by an unrelenting wave of disease. Soon after, skin starts to blister and turn black and purple, and hideous boils form and grow larger with every passing hour. In their last days, her victims vomit blood and suffer from a crazed, delirious fever, overcome by uncontrollable fits of violent shivering. Those that can still stand stagger whilst others are left to wreath on the floor as their blisters burst in their final hours. People die in the thousands before she takes her leave. Pulling up her dark hood, she travels onwards in search of the next village or farm, in search of her next victims. The Black Death, or the Bubonic Plague as it is also known, devastated human populations across the world during an outbreak in the 1300s, with some areas losing half or more, or even all of their people. The plague was first brought to Scandinavia on an infected ghost ship that docked in Badgen on the west coast of Norway in 1349. In just two years, two thirds of the Norwegian population were dead. In Scandinavian folklore, there are tales of a woman, a crone, a harbinger of death and disease, who brings with her this terrible sickness. This tale is most common in Norway. Her name is Pesta, which means the disease. She is said to travel from farm to farm and through villages. Should she be carrying a broom with her, everyone would die. But if she is carrying a rake, someone would be lucky enough to survive. It is said that this is because as she rakes up the souls or lives of her victims, some may escape through the teeth in her rake. However, if she is using her broom, they would not be quite as lucky. Some accounts tell that she carries a large black book with her, in which she writes all the names of her victims. The famous Norwegian artist Theodor Kittelsen claims to have met Pesta during his time in northern Norway in 1896, and he drew pictures and wrote poems about her. The following poem is titled Pesta is Coming. 
The eyes deep in the corpse's core, rolling, rolling, shells and sticks. Winds like sails, lighting up and seeing in, the darkness like a cat. Pester sweeps every corner, the end of her raking, sweep, sweep. Time is short, everyone must join, pear and paw, rub and stub. Pester likes the virus, so good, so sad and dark. The broomstick brushes in nook and cranny. Everything dismal, beautifully dismal. Death and the dead, stench and rotting skin. In some areas of the West Coast, there are tales of the Black Death being brought by both a man and a woman. If he had a rake, then someone would survive. And if she had a broomstick, then all would die. In other areas, the tools that the plague bearers use differ. For example, in Sweden, the man is believed to hold a shovel and the woman a broom. However, the tale is still similar across the countries. From the southernmost region of northern Norway, the plague was thought to have been brought by a boy and a girl. In other places, rather than a humanoid, the Black Death was said to be brought by a strange animal that wandered the land. As well as the various forms of Pesta, the personification of the plague, this time in history and this epidemic brings us terrible tales from all over Scandinavia. One story from Sweden tells of two children who had survived the plague on their own farm, and went on to travel and search for help in the next. The desperate people living there, at a place known as Grevamola, knew that they could be bringing the disease with them, and as the story goes, they gave the children sandwiches and ask them to go into a hole in the ground. Once the two children were in there, they began to quickly cover and eventually bury them alive through their cries and screams. It is said that a voice was heard from beneath the earth as one of them cried out, as long as the earth shall stand, there shall be a cripple on this farm here at Grevamola. A curse which has persisted. In southern Sweden and Denmark, there are tales of the folk medicine practice of burying animals in attempt to keep the plague at bay. It is unclear whether this was some form of sacrifice, but some tales describe that it was believed that a demon, usually a female demon, was the source of the plague, and that by trapping this horrible spirit within an animal and burying it, the plague would be done away with. The Black Death hit the area of Vonga especially hard, and it was said that those who started to show symptoms would have crosses painted on their fists. 
and when they first sneezed, they would begin to dig their own graves. And then they would sit on the edge and wait. When they sneezed for the third and final time, they would throw themselves into the grave, and the others would cover them. Although sneezing is not actually a symptom of the plague, it may have been believed to be such at the time. The reason for digging one's own grave may seem morbid, but it is rooted in the strong belief in the Christian faith, offering a sort of comfort that even though one may die soon, one is ensured a burial in hallowed ground. The Black Death was a devastating force throughout Scandinavia, which already had a relatively low population. And despite the geographical isolation of many places, the terrors of the disease often managed to spread far and wide through small communities. And the folk beliefs surrounding the plague will never quite be as horrific as the impact of the plague itself. This was the 13th installment of Tales from the North, a series on Nordic folklore, myths, and legends. This series is written and created by me, Equinox, and you can find credits below in the description. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my competition here or in the link below. I'll be back next week with a new video introducing and exploring the magical world of Nordic folklore.